If you were to have talked to any frontline soldier who served in Europe during World War II, they would probably tell you that the toughest and most fanatical troops that they went up against belonged to the SS. The SS started as a personal security service for Hitler. As the Third Reich grew in power, so did the SS. And under the leadership of Heinrich Himmler, their reach expanded to include divisions like the Totenkopf units, which operated the concentration camps, and the Waffen SS, who would fight against the Allies on the Eastern and Western fronts. Many of the most notorious war crimes in Europe were committed by members of the SS. The Americans who were fighting their way across Europe had a certain shall we say enthusiasm, for collecting souvenirs to bring back home, which included flags, helmets, and articles of clothing and insignia from the enemy. Some of the most prized souvenirs were those that came from the SS. These soldiers wanted to bring back physical mementos that they had gone up against the best and that they had defeated the best that Hitler had to offer. Today, many of those souvenirs taken from the SS can be found at the Gettysburg Museum of History. I decided I, I'd like to do a video on cutoffs. Now we touched on cutoffs on an earlier video just briefly, but um, cutoffs are some of my favorite insignia from World War II. And you know, we have a lot of cutoffs from all branches, but I started bringing out some of the SS ones today and I, I thought, well, I have so many of those, maybe we'll save the other branches for a different video because it's going to get too long but what what a cutoff basically is is they they started from veterans um getting them from captured or killed enemy soldiers and they would cut um an insignia off sometimes with a bayonet sometimes with whatever they had and um you know it, it varies in size sometimes they would just cut the actual insignia off you know instead of you know, rip, ripping out part of the clothes or the, the uniform. Um, but uh, just real quick, I'm going to go through some of these. And some of these are not cut off. Some of them were actually um, probably removed or n never put on a, on a uniform like this. This is an early Totenkopf from the concentration camps with what we call the candy stripe. But, you know, this is a very rare tab. And I don't think that was ever used. Um, but I, I started bringing some of this stuff out and I said, well, I can't bring this out without bringing that out because that's a very rare one. But we have some collars, complete collars. Um, here's a set of collar tabs. This actually is in um, one of the uh, SS Insignia book, the one that was written by Mark Bando. This actually came from Mark Bando's collection. We did a trade. Um, so we've got collar tabs. We have some cap badges. This is actually a cap badge um, that was, um, this is made from a collar tab, but it was, it was put on a, a, a cap. This is, this is a collar tab sleeve eagle and cuff title from Das Reich. And this is one that I recently got at the show of shows. This is in Bill Shea's book, and it came from this veteran right here. Um, you know, I brought some other stuff out, some of the cap skulls and things like that. This all came from one guy. Um, this is a sleeve, a complete sleeve. Um, we have some cuff titles, uh, you know, and a lot. Of, some of those are uniform removed. This one has veteran provenance, and some of them were not. Um, and here's another set of tabs, um, Toten cough, and this one has the RZM tag on it. Um, you know, this is an officer's sleeve eagle in bullion. This is a cap um, skull from a Panzer soldier with with um, black and there's some camouflage uniform removed this is this is part of a cap here it's very dirty and salty came from a vet so um, it's it's just to me they're they're some of the more interesting pieces of insignia um, just because most of the times they, they came right from vets some of these are documented of who brought it home um, SS ones are extremely rare 
and, and collectible. Um, they seem to be the most valuable ones and um, there's just, um, it's, I think it's the imagery, the skulls and all that stuff. To, it seems to be very collectible and oh I want to point this one out this came off of a crusher hat and this is um, a flat beautiful flat wire eagle beautifully made I should say and then that's the bottom part that came out off of an officer's crusher hat super rare set right there so um just a few items from our collection I didn't bring it all out I just brought some of them so uh, you know it's kind of neat to see it some of these are put away some of them are out but um, it's neat to see them. Oh, this this is from a beret. This is from a Panzer SS beret. Another super rare piece. It's a little. It's in poor condition, but it's still a rare piece. Looking at all of these SS cutoffs, uh, as always, we, we want to be clear that we're not signing off on the ideology or making this like an SS fanboy video. Uh, I think those people are few and far between, and those that are out there are just absolute clowns. Uh, what we are doing is celebrating the men who brought these things home. These are signs of American victory. Uh, so for example, look at this daggum sleeve here. Uh, who is going to allow someone to, to cut their sleeve off of their uniform unless uh, they've either been killed or have, uh, have lost? Uh, and this is from the, uh, the first SS division uh, right here. But take a look at this. So, so again, I, I want to reiterate, these are symbols of American victory. So if we turn this over right here, well, we can see the name of the veteran who brought this back. This came out of the scrapbook of Richard Finch from the 1st Infantry Division. Okay, here, this collar tab was also from Richard Finch. If we turn this one over, this one came from Frank Green from the 145th Engineers. This one came from a Joe Weiser of the 736th Tank Battalion. All right, so all of these things that we are looking at here uh, the, the reason that they are here is because the Americans won. And uh, the, the ideology and, and the people are not to be celebrated, but, but the men who defeated them definitely are. So I want to talk a little bit about this photograph. These are members of the Second Armored Division, and uh, they wore camouflage. American Second Armored Division. They they wore camouflage for a, a period of time in Normandy. Um, they stopped wearing it because they were continuously being confused with German guys who also had similar camouflage like this. The 44 dot pattern um, came out around that time. So uh, there was some friendly fire incidents, so they stopped wearing it. So this is a very unique time period. But if, if you notice, they're holding up a uniform and some medals and stuff like that, but the, the uniform has a Das Reich cuff title. Now, the Das Reich division um, uh, encountered the second armor in an area in France called the Land of the Mort. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, it's a French word, but I'm not going to try to even pronounce it. But um, they, they got decimated by the Second Armor and also uh, the, the Army Air Corps, like, hit their panzer columns. But this supposedly came from that area. Um, according, you know, I, I knew who owned this before and um, it came from a vet, but uh, 
historian Mark Vando, who wrote a book about the second armor, um, thought that that's where this came from based on some, some, uh, some information he had. But um, it's really interesting, you know, when we start, when we have the new museum annex, we're planning on doing a display using this photograph and, and, and this, uh, this group of insignia right here. But it's very interesting, and again, you know, these, are, these were cut off of a uniform, these were taken by a vet, no doubt. And um, this is a great photograph of American soldiers holding their, their uh, captured items.